I wanted to show you how I'd made these plates using something called a mushroom anvil, which is a particular kind of mould. I've made a few round plates and I've also made some square plates. As you can see on that particular one, I've got some embossed detail on it too. And although they're different shapes, they are made using the same anvil. This is the anvil. It was sent to me by a woodworker and a craftsman called Axel, who has an online store. Um, he makes wooden pottery tools, amongst other things. And what I really love about this anvil is that it's beautifully made, and also it has a really lovely rounded edge. He makes different sized moulds. Some are larger plate moulds and others are like these smaller ones that can be used to make a bowl or a teacup. And if you like the look of the anvils, do check out the description below because Axel has said that for the seven days after this video is published, he's offering a 10% discount on his products. And there is a code in the description below that you can use to get that 10% if you want it. And in the meantime, let's get into how I made these plates using the mushroom anvil. I'm using speckled stoneware for these plates and I start by wedging it up a little bit before I roll it out. Before I roll the clay I flatten it a bit with my hand just to make it into a bit of a circle shape. It just makes the rolling process a little bit easier. And then once it's flattened out somewhat I'll roll it using a wide wooden rolling pin. And when it's a certain size I transfer it onto a sheet and my preferred surface for rolling slabs of clay are these vinyl backed pieces of tablecloth because they don't stretch out and they don't absorb water so they're really great for rolling slabs of clay. It's a good idea when you're rolling clay to turn the clay over quite regularly and actually rolling the clay on a sheet of some kind makes it easy to do that. You can just put another sheet on top and flip them over and then peel the bottom sheet away and it's just a good way of turning the clay over without stretching it. And then when the clay reaches a certain size, I start using roller guides. The roller guides just make sure that the slab is an even thickness. And you can see there that I've switched to an even wider rolling pin. And I'll put a link in the description below where I get the rolling pins from. It's a company that is based in the UK, but I know that they ship internationally. And these are actually, they're not pottery rolling pins, they're pasta making rolling, paint, rolling pins. But they're the largest ones that I could find. And it's important as well when you've uh, when you finish rolling the slab to compress it using a, a rib tool. You can either use a rubber rib or that one is a platter tool. It's just a way of aligning the clay particles and giving the slab a bit of extra strength. And it also removes any texture that might have been left behind either by the rolling pin or the surface that you're rolling on. And then when the slab is ready I put the template, the plate template, onto the slab. Now that is a the pink bit is a craft foam template and on top of that is actually well it's a cake board actually it's a cardboard cake board and I use the cake board just to it makes it cutting out the template a little bit easier and you might wonder why I don't just use the cardboard template. Um, actually if you put the cardboard directly onto the slab because the slab is quite uh, fresh, the clay is quite fresh. If I put the cardboard template directly down on top of it, it would probably stick to the slab. So the craft foam, the cutout craft foam circle just stops it from, from sticking to the clay slab. So I just cut around the template using my clay knife and then you can peel away the excess and that excess clay of course can just be wedged up and used, used again. And then removing the template now at the moment the clay is very very fresh and the plan is to put the clay slab on a piece of foam and then press the anvil onto the clay slab so that the clay slab takes the shape of the anvil but at the moment the slab's really fresh clay and if you were to use the anvil at the moment as soon as you took the anvil away the slab would just flop down into a flat shape again so I'm going to put the slab to one side and let it firm up overnight and an easy way of doing that is using one of those, see that green floppy board there, that's just a chopping board which you can buy from a local grocery store. I mean, they're quite thin so you can slide them underneath the slab but they give it enough support so that you can pick up the slab without it bending. So I've left the slab overnight now and it's quite a lot firmer. It's not so firm that if I was to bend it it would crack but it is firm enough so that if I bend it, it's going to keep the shape that it's been bent into. 
So you're going to need a block of foam that looks a little bit like that. You can get something like that out of an old sofa or an old bed. I actually bought mine on Amazon. You can buy blocks of foam that are cut to shape. It's quite a firm piece of foam, so you can press into it. So what you're going to do is you're going to put the slab on top of the foam and then you're going to press into the slab with the anvil like that. And if you're very strong or if your foam block isn't that firm, you may be able to leave it on the table and press the anvil into the clay whilst it's on the table. But I find that I just don't have the, the leverage to do that. So what I do is I get the clay slab onto the foam block and then I put, put it on the floor and then I use my upper body strength and my body weight actually to, to press down into the clay. But before you do that, you have to get the clay slab onto the foam block and I find the easiest way to do that is to lower the block onto the slab and then put your hand you can slide your hand underneath the underneath the slab and then turn the whole thing over and it just helps you get the slab onto the foam block without picking it up and stretching it the less you handle the slab at this point the better so I just take away the the sheet there and then I'm just repositioning it to make sure it's right in the center of the foam block and the other advantage to doing it on the ground is that you can get a bird's eye view. You can lower the anvil onto the clay slab and make sure it's right in the centre. Now, I know that it looks slightly off centre there because the camera is actually at a slight angle. But if you were to look right from immediately above, you'd see that the amount of clay that I can see around each side of the, of the anvil is, is equal. And that means that when I press down into it, I'm going to be pressing down into the centre of the clay slab which is going to make a nice even shaped plate. So as you can see I'm just using my hands and my knuckles there to just press the anvil down into the slab and rolling it round just to make sure that all sides of the plate are going to be nice and curved. And then once I feel that I have done an equal job all the way around the side of the plate you can lift the anvil away and then because the clay is quite firm it just retains the shape of the anvil once the anvil's been removed. Now, what you can do, if you're not in a rush to use the foam block again, you can leave the plate on there just to firm up a little bit more, or if you want to, you can lift it off by sliding one of those chopping boards that I showed you earlier on. You can slide one underneath the plate and lift it away like that. When the clay is leather hard, I'm going to tidy up the edges of the slab. But before I show you how I do that, I'm going to show you how I make the square plate that I showed you earlier on. To make the square plate, it's the same process. Just roll out a slab and then compress the clay. And you can see there, I've made a template that's based on a square. So it's a square, and then I've done curved edges around each side of the square. And it just creates a nice shape once you've used the mushroom anvil. So put the template on the slab and then cut around the template and then one of the things that I do with this plate actually that I didn't do with the other one is once you've cut the slab out you can go around the edges of the slab with a damp sponge and just tidy up the edges of the plate it just makes the whole tidy up process later on a little bit easier so just run a damp sponge around each edge of the plate on either side of the slab and this is a silicon template of some leaves that I'm going to use to create the pattern that I showed you earlier on. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run some, it's just that that paintbrush has got some olive oil on it. It's just a way of stopping the silicon template from sticking to the clay. Because as I say, the clay is quite fresh and it makes the silicon mat will stick to it if I press it into the surface of the slab. So just run, rubbing a little bit of olive oil on there. And then position it where I want the leaf to be, the central leaf to be, pressing it into the clay slab and then when I'm confident that all of the de details, the design has been transferred, I just peel it away and then you can tidy up any little marks that have been left by the mat. And just repeat that process three times. And one of the good things about the anvil tool is that it won't remove that textured detail because the pressure it places on the clay is even, so it's not going to get rid of that texture, that'll stay there. Once I've pressed the plates and they are firm enough to move without the losing their shape, I lift them and I put them onto these old oven racks. And the idea behind the oven rack is they allow a little bit of airflow underneath, 
so that the air will circulate all the way around the plate. The problem with plates is if you put them directly onto a surface, the central piece of clay there stays wet and the edge will dry out and that will cause the plate to warp or bow. So if you put it on the oven rack that will help. Another thing that can help is to use this rice bag. What I do is I put a piece of cellophane onto the centre of the plate and then I put a rice bag in the middle and that again will keep the, the face of the plate nice and flat. The cellophane is just to stop the fabric from absorbing too much moisture. And here's how I make the rice bags. It's very simple, it's just an old piece of fabric, some dry rice, not cooked rice, dry rice, and then bundle it all together, and then you can tie it up with an elastic band or a hair tie or something like that. And then I put the cellophane and the rice bag in place, and I leave the plate until it is leather hard, and I can trim the edges of the plate and tidy them up. One of the best ways to tidy up leather hard clay is using a shredder like this. It's just a regular shredder that you can buy from a local hardware store. Or if you prefer you can use a clay shredder like this which is made by Mud Tools. Either of them are fine. One of the advantages to using the shore form is that it's got that little chamber there and it collects up the little shreds of, of clay that come off. So what I do is I just run it around the rim of the plate going around the outside first, just tidying up, making it even, taking off any lumps and bumps. And then I angle the shredder in a little bit and do the inside edge. And then when I've done that, I just go along the bottom edge as well, just to make it, make the edge of the clay rounded. Then after I've used the shredder, I take a small piece of damp chamois leather and I just run that over the edge of the plate and this will get, a, get rid of any of the texture that has been left behind by the shredder. And here are some of the finished glazed plates. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Keep an eye out for the next video that's coming up any second now. Thanks for watching. Bye!